In this video, we can have a look at the latest updates in the WP bottom menu plugin. You'll see that the WP bottom menu adds these icons across the bottom of the page. And the two additions that were recently added is the first is related to the search. So here you can specify uh, the post type to search. So for example, post product, my custom post type. So you can select and then by comma separating the name of the posts, you can restrict it to certain post types, or you can just type in the word all and all post types will be searched. In this case, we've created a menu that is focused specifically on the products. So in this case, we've set the search how to search only for product. And then on the right hand side now, you'll see that I've added a new icon here called shop. And what's nice there is that I can actually add a menu now that appears in the full page view on mobile in this case. And the other nice thing is that this menu is set up then using the WordPress menu um, system. So it's not that you create a custom menu separate to WordPress and that integrates directly then into the plugin. So that's really nice. And the other thing that we'll also look at doing then in this video is just how to create the formatting so that wherever you click to the left or the right of the name of the page, it'll still navigate through to that page. So I can click here on the right hand side and it'll take me through to hoodies. With the default, you'd need to actually select the item name as the link only applies to the name and not to the uh, padding and the space around. But I'll show you how you can quickly do that. Um, it's really, very really quick. So to head over then to the plugin itself, here we have the um, WP mot bottom menu on WordPress. And if we scroll down, you'll see that in the bottom FAQs, you'll see how can I add a full screen menu? And then also how can I search for custom post types? So that extends it um, really nicely, allowing you to create that bottom menu specifically for what you want. And then of course, with that menu, you can also create your mobile menu. So that's a really nice feature. And then what um, I've done here is I've just uploaded the plugin. It's already installed, as you can see. So this is what you're looking for, WP bottom menu. And when you click on settings here, it will automatically take you to the customized settings and take you directly to the WP bottom menu setting. So first thing I'm going to do is change the screen width so that we can see the menu across the bottom. And let's have a look at the search by custom post type. And then we'll have a look at this custom menu. Right, we'll head over to menu items, second from the right, second from the bottom. And you'll see here that at the moment we have the menu set to search for product. And if I click the drop down, you'll see now that we have a new item called search for custom post types. With that selected, you'll see that nothing changes here. And we'd obviously like to set the custom post types to search by. So we'll go back to the main settings option. And if we look at the bottom, you'll see here that we have this custom search post types um, text field available. And if I was to type in, say, for example, post comma product, then the post entries as well as the product entries will be searched. If I did have a custom post type, I could go comma custom post, uh, whatever the custom post type is. And the custom post type would then be included in the items to be searched. As I don't have, I will remove. And as I only want to search product, and essentially product is a custom post type, I can then just enter product here. Of course, we do have the option in the menu item to select the search for product. And I'm just going to show you now how that would work on the front end. So if I was here in my shop and I did a search earlier, so we're going to remove that search and we just go back to the home page here, and then I'm going to do a search here for hoodie and enter. And now you can see we have the search results for hoodie. And of course, only the hoodies were searched and not uh, any other post type. So that's how you can set the post types to be searched, whether you want it to be uh, your own custom post type or a collection of post types up to you. The other item to look at is the menu item here that you can set to pop up when you click on that icon. And just to show you how that works, I'm here under menu items. I've selected custom menu 
And that's all that I need to do within the WP bottom menu plugin settings to activate that option. Of course, now I need to set a menu to be um, identified by the plugin as the menu to appear when you click on that link for the menu. Now, just something else that you need to know. If I was to move this menu item, say one up, so now the menu is no longer at the end and I click, you will see that that menu doesn't work. So the menu only works in the far right hand corner. So just to show you again, there we have the menu appearing if it's in the far right hand side. If I move that all the way to the first menu item, let's see, right, so we'll just check here. We've now moved it all the way to the beginning and I click, nothing happens. That item has to be on the far right hand side. Far right hand side and it works. Now what we need to do is make sure that we have a menu that is identified as the menu to include in this menu item. And to do that, we'll head over here in the customize section to menus. And you'll see that I created a bottom menu specifically for this. And what I did is I included the product categories. So you'll see um, I created first a shop link to go to the shop page, and then I just added the product categories. Now, in order for this to work with the bottom menu, you'll see that you have this menu location option now, and there's a tick box that says WP bottom menu, current bottom menu. And that's to let you know that this menu here is currently selected to appear in the WP bottom menu menu. You can only select one menu at a time. So if I was to create a, another menu to appear in that spot and I selected it, this menu would then automatically be deselected and the new menu that I've created and selected would then appear. So very easy to do. In this case, we're looking at it in the customize section. If I was to go and have a look at that inside the menu, so I'm going to navigate here to the menus inside the dashboard and you'll see here I'm on menus. Here's the bottom menu that I created. And you'll see at the bottom here under menu settings, display location, WP bottom menu is selected. And just to show you what would happen if I, let's say I set to the plugin that I'm going to change that. So I go to my main menu and I was to select the WP bottom menu and save. The other option is deselected. And this menu is now the bottom menu. So there you can see it's been selected and that reference to current is no longer visible. And if I go over to the bottom menu now, you will see that the uh, indication here tells me that it is currently set to the main menu one. So I'm going to set the menu that I created with the product categories then to be the associated menu. Right. And that's all it takes then to associate a menu then to the WP bottom menu pop-up menu and once again then the only setting that you need to make inside the plugin itself once you've identified a menu is to add a menu item and select custom menu that's all you have to do there are no other settings that you need to make inside that menu item another thing that I would then just like to show you is when you create that uh, menu for the first time in mobile view initial initially it won't look like this so here in the mobile view you'll see where that we have the name and we have the border stretching all the way across and it looks pretty neat when you install for the first time and i'm just going to um, comment out the additional css and publish and we'll refresh the page, you'll see that initially your menu will look something like this. So you need to click on the actual name in order for it to activate. So on a mobile device, maybe you want to just expand that area and make it um, more, just a little bit easier to click on. To make that possible is really easy. Let's just expand the section here on the right. And then we're just going to inspect the elements to see the classes and how they put together. So there we see that we have the main wrap and then we have the ordered list. So there we have the URL wrap and then the various elements within the menu are these LR items here. And what we want to do now is expand this in a way so that we can 
uh, make it easier for mobiles. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'd like to make this 100% width so that the wrap is all the way across the page. And to do that, just going to click on this plus item here. And you'll see that it's a new star rule. And then it'll automatically bring up the ID for that particular item. And we'll just set that width there then to 100%. And now when we, let's just do that again. Right, so we've set the width to 100%. And now you'll see that the box is no longer just around the menu items, but around all the items. Now what we want to do is in, improve the click area. Now the click area will be the area wrapped by this ahref tag. As you can see at the moment, the styling is all around the LI tag, and that's not really going to help us because anybody clicking, for example, um, in that um, orange area, that's also not going to be clickable. So let's uh, just adjust some of the styling here. First thing that I'm going to do then is head over uh, to this LI selector. And what I'd like to do is um, remove the margin that's been allocated to those items. Now you'll see here that the class is already set here for us and what's nice here is it says apply this margin bottom of 1EM to all the items except uh, don't apply it to the last child which is the last item and you'll see now on the screen that all the items show that little orange section of margin except the last one. So that that actually is really nice because that means that now that when we add that borderline across the entire width of the page we can do that using the style and what we can also do now is where it says margin bottom we can set that to zero and what we'll do now is we can just go border bottom and make that one pixel solid and i'm going to make it a light gray so now we have that in place and that's great but now what we need to do is just add some space around the individual link. So now we'll move down to the link and you'll see how that the link selector automatically appears and that's great. And you can see that it shows that this applies to all the items. And now what we want to do is add some padding. So if I go in now and I say padding, let's make it 15 pixels all round. That's great. Um, you'll see that the padding is applied, but the individual items now overlap. If I then go one step further and I say make the width 100%, so we've, um, let's just add that width of 100%, so now it means that if I click anywhere to the left or right of the item, I would like that to be a clickable area and still the items show that they overlap. So to prevent the overlap, we will now say just go display, and in this case we can say display block, and you'll see that the moment I add display block, the link items now display the way that we would like them to display. And you'll see now that each item now stretches all the way from left to right. And with that additional padding, that has now been applied to the link area. And that would mean that I can click anywhere in the space to the right of that item and the link would apply. What I've already done here earlier, as you can see, is I created those classes already. So here you can see we have that class that applied to all the items except the last child. And I set the bottom margin there, to, or all the margin to zero, so I can effectively then just remove that item. Um, here we have the link selector setting, so the padding of 15 pixels all round, a width of 100%, and then display block for the starts to apply correctly to the individual items. And here we have the width of the nav item, that whole nav area then set to 100%. So I'm going to remove that comment so that the styles will apply and publish. So you'll see now that if I refresh, the styles are in effect. And if I click anywhere to the side of an item, the link still applies. So that's how you can quite easily then with those styles just upgrade the look so that on the mobile 
view you have a little bit more finger space then to click on the individual links so let's close that and that pretty much wraps up the two new elements that were added to the wp bottom menu if you'd like to know how to go about setting the styles and adding custom links or pages to the uh, rest of the icons i'll include a link to the previous video where that was explained in more detail well i hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoy the great new features and thank you for watching